Hey everybody, Guitar Guts here, and today I'm going to compare four short scale basses for you. So these are the four we're going to talk about. On the left hand side here, we have the Sterling Stingray short scale bass with its single humbucker pickup. And that is a passive bass, all of these are. Um, and then we have the Fender Mustang bass short scale with the PJ configuration. And then we have the Squire Jaguar short scale bass. Now, unfortunately, this one has been discontinued currently. I hated to see that one go. It was a good little bass. Maybe they'll bring it back later. Uh, and then on the end here, we've got the Imanez TMB30 short scale bass. This is the little brother to the TMB100 full sized Ibanez. Now, before we really dive in here, let's talk a little bit about price. Um, the Fender Mustang is going to be more expensive than the others by a couple of hundred dollars. Um, I'm not going to talk exact numbers here because if, you know, if recent history is any guide, whatever I tell you today, it's going to be a hundred dollars more next month. So we'll just talk in uh, <laughs> vague numbers. <laughs> So that one's going to be a couple hundred dollars more than the other bases, but you can feel what you're paying for. All the controls feel very sturdy. It is a very cohesive feeling base. Um, no sharp edges or anything like that. Um, it's, it's just a great feeling base. You can tell that you're getting something for your money when you buy the Fender Mustang base. Now, just a couple hundred dollars down for that, but not a big step down in quality at all. The um, Sterling Stingray Bass, um, that one again, a very cohesive, uh, well put together bass. You might need to do a little more polishing and set up on that one than you do the Fender, but uh, not much at all. Um, also a great little bass. Now the other two on the end here, um, they, you know, based on the current price of the Fender Mustang, these little guys are priced about a third or a fourth of that. When they came out, the only bad thing is they've discontinued this um, Jaguar base by Squire. And so the prices on the used market have pretty much doubled. But you're still getting a good value for your money. I don't think you're throwing money away even at twice the price they were charging to begin with. Because this is the older uh, vintage modified um, line of guitars from Squire, and they were just good guitars. Um, that was the line that was around before the current um, Classic Vibe series came out. Uh, and then on the end here, I know you think I'm going to say it's a big step down in quality, but it's really not. The Ibanez TMB30 is a really well put together, great feeling little bass with absolutely no issues. Uh, it's just a great base and an incredible value for the money. Um, so, I, you know, there there are none of these guitars that I would recommend against. They're all great bases. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the, not the scale, because these are all 30-inch scale guitars. They're all short scale, 30-inch scale bases. But the reach does feel different on them. And the reason can be seen down here at the bottom of the body on this Stingray bass. You see how close the bridge is to the bottom of the body on that Stingray? And then look how much further up it is onto the body on the other three guitars, right? And that does make a difference. Um, the Sterling Stingray feels like a much shorter scale guitar. It feels as short as the Ibanez Micro, which is just like a 28 inch scale. Uh, but it's a full 30 inch short scale bass. It just feels shorter because they have shifted the bridge and therefore the neck down toward the uh, rear end of the body. Uh, and I think you, maybe you can see it here. You know, look where the nut is on each one of these. You know, and that one's just shorter. It's further down. Um, <clears throat> so it's not as much of a reach 
And if you've got arm or shoulder problems or something like that, that might be a great thing. Now, if you've got really long arms and, and no problems with your shoulders or anything like that, that might actually be a bad thing. You know, it might feel too cramped to you. Feels fine to me though. And it's one of my favorites for just sitting around and plinking on the couch because of that short reach. You know, it doesn't wear your arm out. Now, um, I want to talk a little bit about strings because there is a little bit of difference. You know, when you're shopping for bass strings for a short scale bass, you don't want to buy the regular long scale strings like you would get for a normal bass. You want to find something that says uh, short scale bass made for your short scale guitar. Now, you don't have to do that. Um, oh, and let me show you this too. Some sets uh, don't say short scale, but they'll give you the string length. And the reason they do that, you know, there's some medium scale basses, and there's also some basses that string through the body. If you look at mine here, they all string through the back of the bridge. You can see the strings coming in from behind the bridge there. Um, and if you've got one that strings through the body, you need to think about that extra length of string that you need to get through the body. And that's why some uh, companies like GHS put the actual length of the string there, because you might need to measure that if you need to know that. So that's their short scale set, 32.75 inch, and that's a regular long scale set at 37.25 inches. Now, I don't always use short scale strings on my basses. Sometimes I just put strings that I usually play on my other basses. I like, um, so I like lighter gauge strings on some of my basses. This is a set that I use on some of my regular 34 inch scale basses. And you can stick those on your short scale bass most of the time. As a matter of fact, I think I've got them on this, um, not that brand, but I've got just a regular set of um, long scale strings on this Ibanez guitar. And it's not causing any problem at all. Now, keep in mind, that's a light gauge string. If you go up to 100, on the E string or 105, you're gonna have too much of wadded up string on your string post there. So it works well with lighter gauge strings. But, and this is what I wanted to point out, you can't do that with the Sterling bass because the holes that are down in those tuners on the Sterling bass are too tight and I can't even get a 95 gauge string down in those tuning posts. So you have to go with something that's made for short scale bass um, for that um, Sterling Stingray bass. Now, um, thinking about balance, you know, ergonomics and balance of the guitars. Uh, I know I play sitting down most of the time, so it doesn't bother me if my guitars have a little bit of neck dive to them, but I know that bothers some people a lot that play standing up. Uh, and the Fender Mustang is the one that's going to offend most on that front, I think, uh, basically just because of the way it's built. Um, now, mine's fairly light, so it may not be the case in all of them. You might find one with a heavier body that would have a little bit less. But if you simply look at the butt end of the guitar down here, you know, the very rear end of the guitar, on all three other bases, there's a lot more mass on the rear end, the bottom end of the bass, a lot more mass down here than there is up here in the upper horns on those guitars. And that prevents neck dive. If you look at the Squire, it's like that. There's a lot more mass here than there is up here. A lot more mass here than there is up here. But on that Mustang bass, it's about even really. I mean, you've got some mass down here, but then up here it's stretched out and you've got a lot of mass up here on the upper part of the body, and I think that contributes a little bit to neck dive. It doesn't bother me, may not bother you, but I just thought I'd point that out. Um, the last thing that I wanted to mention while we're looking at all of them here is the string spacing. Now, the first three here all have uh, 1.5 uh, jazz bass sized necks. They're they're thin, they're comfortable, like a, like a Fender jazz bass, um, 1.5. But the Ibanez has a wider string spacing. Now, it's not quite as wide as a P bass. I think that's 1.625. This is just 1.6, I think. Um, and that is super comfortable for some reason. 
I don't I don't really like P base spacing because it's just a little bit further than I than my fingers and my pick hand wants it to be, and I, I tend to miss getting right dead on the strings with the P base. But this is really, really super comfortable. It's really in a Goldilocks zone. Uh, jazz bass string spacing, the width of the neck up top, has always been just a hair tight. And on a full scale bass, that's not a problem. On these, it can sometimes feel just a little bit cramped when you're playing certain things. Uh, and that Ibanez string spacing, it really stretches it out to where it's super comfortable. Now, the other thing that you can see on some of these including the Ibanez, is that at the base of the fretboard down here, at the, at the body end of the fretboard, it fans out like a normal jazz bass would. But on the Fender and the Squire, it doesn't much. It stays fairly thin down there as well. Fairly narrow down here on this end. And it fans out a little bit on the Sterling. And I just think that that slightly fanned out bottom on the fretboard is also just a little bit more comfortable on those guitars. But now, it, you know, it, I'm making a mountain out of a molehill here. There's not that much difference in it. And I'm sure you'd be satisfied with any one that you wanted because these are all uh, really good quality bases. So now let's break it down and we will talk about each um, base in turn. I think I may film that in separate videos and post those up. So look for those. I'll try to put links in the comments so you can get to those and um, find out some, some more details about each one that might help you make a decision if you're thinking about buying one of these. 